thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for supplying all our needs. God, and we came here today to worship you, God. We came here today to give honor where honor is due, Lord. We came here today to praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that bled and died, the one that gave his life for us, the one that loved us when, when we didn't love him. We thank you, Jesus. We came here to worship you, God. If they'll worship and they'll shout for the world, we can shout for Jesus. If they'll, if they'll jump and shout and scream for the things of this world, then we can get excited about Jesus and all the good things he's done for us. God, we thank you today. We worship you today, God. We, we come here today, Lord, to give you our praise, to give you everything that's within us, Lord, because without you, we're nothing. Without you, we have nothing, God. And all things were made by you and for you. Let's worship Jesus.
Surely the presence of the Lord is here today. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We need to remember Ruth, Sister Ruth Cooper, Sister Ruby Krennic, and Mary Bivens. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for Harrison today. Are there any other needs this morning, Brother Salinas? My little brother Stavis. Sister Ruby Critic, Lord, Mary Bivens, God, these elders, Lord, we ask God for you to touch them, God, touch them in their bodies, their minds, their spirits, oh God, we pray for Harrison today, Lord, God, we ask for you to heal his body, God, let God, the sickness, Lord, leave his little body, God, touch Michael Jeffrey today, Lord, God, we ask for you to move in his life, touch Amanda, God, this morning, God, let the Holy Ghost move. Uh, God, we pray for Stephen Salinas, God. Uh, God, we pray for Steve Ford, Lord. Uh, Almighty God, Lord, we ask, uh, God, for you to have your way, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost, uh, God, move in these situations. Heal Steve Ford, God, uh, and Stephen, God. Lord, let your healing virtue flow in their bodies. Uh, God, we pray for Willie today, God. We ask, uh, Lord, for you to move and for you to work, God. We pray for Leonard, Lord, this morning, God. God, we ask for you to intervene, God, in Leonard's life this morning, God. In Jesus' name, God. Almighty God, we pray for Sister God Demon's request, God, all the, her mother and niece, God, and co-worker, God. But God, I ask for you to move and work, God, in their lives. Uh, God, let the Holy Ghost move. Lord Jesus, we need you today, God. Uh, God, touch the Ray family, God, as they're overseas. Uh, God, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon them uh, and with them, oh God. Uh, Lord, we need you today. Today. We need the Holy Ghost, uh, God, more than anything else, God, we need the liberty, uh, God, in the spirit, oh God, uh, oh God, I pray for you to break, uh, Lord, every chain, every chain of bondage, uh, every chain of addiction this morning, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, God, let the power of God be released, uh, God, in the service this morning, uh, in Jesus' name, uh, every Everybody say in Jesus' name. Lord, let it be done today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for it today. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 If you can be seated this morning, we'd like to 
say that we are so thankful for everyone that contributed to our men's fellowship last night. Amen. Brother Brandon brought the word last night. Amen. That edified and helped our men. We, we went around and we all talked about it and had what everybody else said edified and our, all of our men. That's what we need. We need one another. Amen. 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 Sister, Sister Salinas. My word, she made some amazing food and fed our fed our bodies. Amen. And it was good, quite delicious. Uh, I told Brother Adam and Brother Selena, I said, man, she done told off on her, so. <laughs> that was that was delicious. Brother Roland was out of town yesterday with family and he uh, he messaged me and he said, Brother John, he said, Can you can you handle men's fellowship. I was like, well, I, I guess I can. And uh, my plan was to do chili cheese dogs. <laughs> that's my, that's my go-to, man. It's cheap, it's easy. You know, I've got a, I've got a chef like Brother Roland or yeah. Salinas. And uh, I, uh, I, so yeah, that's what the fellas had in store for them last night. <laughs> And Sister Salinas texted me or messaged me earlier in the day, and she said, "Brother John, would you like me to make something that I was like, "If you want to, you can." I know those fellas would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> they they say that the chili I get gives them indigestion, so <laughs> so we're very thankful for you, Sister Salinas. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. Are you glad for the Lord? Amen. Are you glad for what the Lord is doing? We had a great turnout at our, our youth rally at the Expo Center. Uh, uh, the last numbers that I had was that we had 140 uh, people at the rally. Amen. Uh, and uh, that was the last numbers that was given to me. Uh, but it, it was a great time. Amen. Great time. I want to thank our music team for being ready to help. These great ushers. I appreciate Nick and Nate. They were standing at the door greeting people as they were coming in. Amen. I appreciate these young men. And, and then all the young men that stayed behind and helped break down. Young and older. I'm not, a, I'm not really a young man anymore. But uh, I appreciate all these young fellows that stayed behind and helped break down, made it to where me and Brother Lavender would be there all night long, tearing, tearing down all the sound and all that. So we appreciate everybody very much. Amen. We're thankful. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to Sister Rosa. I, I, how many of you have been coming up here and just notice that it just smells a little better. It smells good and clean. And Brother Demon, he walked into the fellowship hall. He said, what's that I smell? I said, I think it's pine salt. I said, it smells good. <laughs> uh, it was, but we, we appreciate Sister Rosa. She comes up here every week and wanted to make sure that everything's cleaned up, smelling good before service. And we appreciate you very much, Sister Rosa. Amen. It's important. You know, what Sister Emily was teaching about this morning in Sunday school, those are, it is important that you become invested in the kingdom. Amen. Because the king has invested in you. That's right. Every one of you. Every one of you. You're not just someone who, who the king says, oh, it's, oh, you just come and you just sit on a pew and don't. Don't do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. I'm not going to call you to do nothing. No, every single one of us, amen, God has called us to do something. Amen. And 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 I really enjoyed that that teaching this morning. And uh, she's she's been teaching that to me for a little while now. <laughs> amen. What y'all heard this morning, I've 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 heard multiple times. So, uh, not all of it at one time, but she is. I appreciate amen, that teaching this morning. Amen. If you listen to it and you apply it to your life, it will bless you. 
Amen. It will help you to get closer to the Lord. It will help you if, if you will apply and uh, these principles to your life. Amen. You will find your relationship with God getting richer. Amen. I'm, she's, she's been talking to me for a while. She said, John, you work too much. And uh, so I guess I'm going to get one of those budget sheets so that we can... I'm going to let her fill it out for me. <laughs> and, and so, but you know, it's important. It's important that, that you put the right things first. That you, you know, that you don't spend all your time doing something else that really doesn't matter. Amen. While things that are most important go undone. So, amen. I appreciate everybody. Well, we're going to ask our ushers to come this morning. They're going to serve you. I appreciate Brother Jesse and Brother Nick. Some great young men. Brother Nick told me the other day on the on the van, he said, he said, I think I want to be a preacher. I said, Oh yeah, you got something to say? He said, Yeah. I said, Well then preach. <laughs> preach it on the van. We're riding home. We got about 20 minutes. I said, I said Give me what you got. <laughs> Amen. He's, I appreciate him. I appreciate his desire to want to do something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So anyways, we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness, O oh God. Lord, I ask God for you to bless this tithe and this offering as it is given unto you. Let it go to the furtherance of your kingdom and your gospel, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give us unto the Lord today, amen, and God will bless you for that, amen, praise God. I believe Sister Emily has a few announcements to make. Everybody say, Lord bless Sister Emily. Lord bless y'all. Um, just real quick um, for... Uh, the only thing we have left for this month is uh, Friday, September 30th, is all night prayer. Uh, so I believe the last time I had looked, all of the time slots were full, I think except for one, unless they got filled since the last time I looked. <laughs> but um, if you would like to um, schedule a time of prayer, if there's somebody already there, feel free. I will We'll say it over and over again. Feel free to go ahead and select a time and pray anyways. Um, and then first thing coming in October, um, the end of the year is flying by. Saturday, October 8th, we are having a youth bake sale at the Belton Feed Supply from 8 a.m. to noon. Um, we're going to be doing uh, baked goods and breakfast tacos. Um, please make sure that your items are covered or packaged or that we don't have anything that's going to melt because it's still a little warm outside. Um, and if you want to make something that leans more towards fall, autumn, like breads and things like that, um, this is the perfect time to do that because um, everybody's just all about all the seasonal stuff. So um, I would appreciate all the help we can get with that. Um, again, this is going to be for our young people, so uh, just mark that on your calendar. Amen, amen, praise God, amen. There was something else I was supposed to say, but it has slipped me. I guess my 38 years of existence is starting <laughs> to show itself, and uh, it has, amen. Well, let's worship the Lord this morning, praise God. Oh, then. 
that needs prayer. Amen. I, I feel like that the Lord wants to touch, amen, touch you today. He wants you to leave this interaction changed. Amen. If you need prayer, I want you to come forward. Can all the men of the church come gather around Brother Dwayne? Amen. We're going to pray. Amen. The Lord is going to move. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you today, God. God, we love you today, Jesus. Almighty God, Lord, let the Holy Ghost, God, touch Brother Dwayne, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Almighty God, Lord Jesus. I ask you, God, God, for you to touch Brother Dwayne, God. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, move his Brother Dwayne, my life, God, right now.
said what I was wanting to say, you know, already. I didn't want to be, you know, repetitious, but it was really good. Really enjoyed it. Brother Brandon talked to us there and shared his heart. Uh, but I just thought about, you know, the church, uh, you know, it's, it's, this church is not a it's not a judge and jury. Yes, you know, we're not a judge and a jury. When people come here, we're not, you know, putting them up on the stand and asking them questions and, and trying to find out what they're guilty of, you know. That's not what we're doing here. We're a hospital. We're a hospital. A spiritual hospital. Yes. And uh, we are trying to help people that's got problems. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, you know, when the doctor tells you you're going to die if you don't quit that, he's not saying that because he's trying to kill you or judge you. He's trying to address things that will actually destroy you. Right. You know, and when we teach the Word of God, that's what we do. We, we're trying to help people go to heaven. Right. There's none, we don't judge nobody. We're not nobody's judge. There's one judge and right. one lawgiver that's able to say and destroy what James said. You know? So I, I don't put myself into that category. Emily did a great job this morning. She didn't even imply nothing like that, but I'm just saying... If you got gouged a little bit, that's good, solid teaching. And good, solid teaching will do, it'll move you out of your comfort zone and get you where you really need to be on the path of the Lord. And uh, so if you got gouged this morning, this is the hospital to fix you. Amen. To help you. Amen. We want you to get better. Amen. You'll never stand before us. You'll stand before God. And we want, when you go that place, we want you to see him with a smile on his face, you know. We want to have pleased him and not live in opposition to him. I love the word of God. I love to hear what I can do to do better. Amen. And I hope that's your desire too. But that I really enjoyed that, Emily. That was very good. I'm really a blessed man to have such a good daughter-in-law. Amen. 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 Praise God. She's a real blessing. And those girls the other night at the rally, they did such an awesome job. Yeah. Didn't they do good? Yeah. I know I'm partial, but I thought they was good. You know, they did really good. I felt the spiritual stuff coming out of you, didn't you? Yeah. I did. And that's what I like. I like that when the songs are sang and it draws your attention to Jesus. Amen. Don't you? That's what it's about. And you know what? That's what he wants. Amen. Well, I'm going to mark, turn into Mark chapter 5, verse 36. This morning. I normally teach on Sunday morning, so this is a tad uh, different. So we'll see what happens. Amen. Amen. Praise 
praise God. Mark chapter 5, just one verse of scripture. This is regards to uh, Jairus' house where his daughter was sick and uh, they had done come and received a report uh, saying that she had died. And they were all crying and weeping and, and uh, telling Jesus no need, no need even coming now. And it says in verse 36, And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Everybody say, Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Only believe. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity. God, that you've given us to be here today. Thank you for the good word of the Lord we've already heard. For your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for putting us on the potter's wheel. Mold us and shape us. Uh, Lord Jesus, you're our example. And I think everyone in here would say we've got more shaping than he's done in our lives, Lord. And I just thank you for, Lord, bearing along with us, being kind to us, being good to us. And now, Lord, I ask you to touch your people and bless them as we get further into your word. That something be said that's going to help your people, Lord. And, uh, Lord, I ask for grace this morning to minister that word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Who knows what will happen? Maybe I'll teach, maybe I'll preach, maybe I'll preach. I don't know. We'll just uh, do what I, what I believe the Lord uh, put upon my heart. And I really, and honestly, I had forgot about the date that Emily was going to start her, her teaching. We talked about it uh, a little bit back, and I had let it slip my mind that it was this Sunday. And so John reminded me of it yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I had stuff that I had been teaching on. And uh, I just want to make sure that I'm on track with the Lord, you know. And not that I couldn't teach, and I will teach further on some of the things I've been talking about. Uh, but I uh, went to bed last night. Man, my mind, you ever get where your mind's just exhausted? You're, you're, and you just can't, you feel like, oh, I just can't even think. And so I went to bed last night, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I need a sense of direction, you know. Uh, I already had stuff I could use, but I don't like to just use just anything, you know what I mean? I, I've always felt like the Lord, I want to make sure that I'm on track with what he would want me to say. And uh, so I went. I went to bed last night, and uh, I had to. I couldn't hardly think. And my mind was tired, you know. And uh, so I, it was about nine thirty, kind of early for some of you guys, but it was not that early for me. Uh, but anyway, I I went ahead and I just I thought, Lord, I can't do this without you. So you're going to have to put something in me to let me know what you want. And I figured if you know, if, nothing, if the Lord never gave me nothing, uh, then I'd just go ahead with what I was talking about on Sunday school. But I woke up at 2 this morning. Amen. And I felt pretty confident. Uh, in fact, you know, I have made the mistake before to say, well, I'm just going to go ahead and sleep on it for a while. You know, and, uh, and then when I would wake up in the morning, I'd have trouble. Uh-oh, what was it, you know? And uh, so I learned not to do that, you know. I, so I got up at two. And I've been up since two something, and uh, and I and I started uh, gathering together what the Lord was putting in my spirit, and uh, put it on paper because again, I found out that I, I forget a lot of stuff, you know. Amen. And uh, fortunately, you see me up here a lot of times when I'm preaching. I say, up. Oh, I just lost it, <laughs> you know. Maybe the Lord will bring it back to me. That happens to me. It probably happens to a lot of us, but uh, you know, I like to get it while I while it gives it to me. So anyway, uh, so I haven't spent a lot of time on this, but 
You know, the Lord can do what needs to be done for whatever, uh, amen, whatever we need to hear this morning. I believe I got a sense of direction what he wants me to preach on. We're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise God. Amen. I kind of don't want to go very fast because I wanted to uh, sink into you, you know, what, what I've got to say. Uh, praise God. And if I uh, stumble around or anything like that, just try to listen to the gist of what I'm telling you. Uh, praise God. God is working with, uh, you know, instruments that are faulty when he's working with people, you know. And uh, they may call Moses, you know, Joseph or something. And sometimes, but, but the, the thing that God is trying to get across to us is that you have an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen? Amen. Praise God. First Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. And by the way, Emily asked me what to call this, and I said, girding up the loins of your mind. Girding up the loins of your mind. Everybody say, my mind. Amen. So Peter says to the Christians, he says, wherefore, Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Where's your loins at? Right here. Huh? This your loin. He says, gird up the loins, not your loins, but the loins of your mind. And being sober is basically saying the same thing. Be sober-minded, what he's referencing. He's not referring to alcohol. You know, we don't do that anyway. Amen? Amen. But he says, gird up the loins of your mind. And, you know, be sober. Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of in other words, the revealing of Jesus Christ. This is the end time. This is talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ when he was revealed from heaven. Right. Amen. Praise God. There's grace that's going to be brought unto us. You know what that grace is? Being caught out of here. Huh? That's, amen. He's going to raise us up by his own power. Amen. Praise God. But he tells these Christians to gird up the loins of your mind. When you think of uh, something that's very similar to this word girt, think of a girt, right? Or you put a girt strap around a horse. It's a little bit different spelling, but a girt strap is what holds the saddle on. You cinch it up, you, know, you pull it up, tighten it around so the saddle doesn't fall off. Amen? Praise God. Those that have a little bit of other problems, praise God. He went on to say, uh, as obedient children, praise God. God, want, God wants us to be obedient children, not disobedient children, but obedient children, fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. What's he saying there? Yeah. Well, you used to be disobedient children, but you come to the Lord and he wants you to become obedient children. Don't take on the same image that you used to take on. Right? right? That's what he's saying. Not fashioning yourself according to your former lust and you. Don't live like you used to live, right? right? Don't involve yourself with that life, right? The loins of your mind. You see, most of our battles that we fight, praise God, most of our battles that we fight, we will find ourselves in fighting them on the battlefield of our minds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Did not Paul teach casting down imaginations? Exactly. Where do imaginations take place at? In your mind, in your thought life, right? right? We cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself uh, against the knowledge of God, bringing the thought to the mind. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's where the enemy works on. Amen. Every one of us face temptation. I'm in the church. You know, that if your thoughts 
were displayed on the wall where everybody could see what crosses your mind, we'd all be, you know, wishing we were someplace else. Yeah, right. right? Amen. Because listen to me, there is an adversary. We got one thing is we got flesh, which is is a is a fallen nature, right? Everyone was forgetful moments. But he said, you can't help the, the birds that fly over, but you can keep them from roosting. Amen. Right? Praise God. I got chickens that every night, they go in there and go roosting. Amen? But if I close the door of the pen, they can't get in there. I won't do that to them because I want them to be saved. But listen to me. You can't help everything that, that comes to you and tries to penetrate your walk with God. Amen? Praise God. But you can keep it from staying there. And you can keep it from uh, taking a hold of you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And staying there. Amen. We cast them out, right? Amen. Praise God. So the mind, uh, uh, a whole lot of our battle is in the mind. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 uh, through 13, Paul admonished. Amen. He admonished the Christians. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power. Amen. Unless you're already in the enemy camp in the POW, you're going to find, if you're, if you're free from the devil, he's your adversary, and you will find yourself wrestling. Right. Yeah. That's why you got to gird up the loins of your mind. But we don't wrestle against people, we, not flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wicked praise God it is to protect your head praise God amen that's why Paul told Christians in Philippians I'm going to have to get Brother Damon to get this in Philippians 4 and 8 Paul instructed the, the Christians there in Philippi amen he said wherefore taken oh no that's not it I just read down from Praise God. And here it is. Philippians 4 and 8. Paul instructed the Christian. He said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do what? They think on these things. Why do you want to think on those things for? Amen. Because that's what you're doing when you're girding up the loins of your mind. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Filtering out all that other stuff. Get all that other stuff out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And think on these things. Amen. And you, some people, I've heard people before in, in over the years, you know, uh, saying that they just could not help yeah, their thought, the way what they think about it and stuff like that. But if you get them out in the there and the truck's fixing to hit them, they'll think real close to back getting out of the road. Yeah. You can't change, amen, the way that you think, but you may have to put some effort forth, amen, to do that. And plus, listen to me, the greatest change that takes place inside of us in our mental state is when we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Praise God. That's when we get the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we... Amen. Praise God. Paul told these Christians at Ephesus, amen, instructed the Christians, he said that you put off uh, concerning the former conversation or behavior, right? The old man. Yeah. You're going to put it off. Amen? Come on, this is, we, we told you a while ago you got to put on something, right? The whole armor of God. Here it says, put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed. Be renewed. Amen. Praise God. Kind of renovated, you know. Got out the old stuff and renovated and, re, and be renewed in the, look how it's worded there, in the spirit of of your mind. Amen. The spirit of your mind. Praise God. Amen. And then it says, and and that you put on, there it is, that put on again. It's not talking about being a put on. 
There are put on Jesus. Yeah. But he's talking about genuinely putting off the old man in his deeds, right? Put put off the former lust in your ignorance, right? Yeah. And put on the new man, praise God, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. True holiness is an inward holiness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And it and it and it, 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 it it shows itself on the outside. Amen. Right. Fake holiness is putting it on the outside and not having it on the inside. Amen. Amen. We're not we're not into that. We are into pure holiness, real holiness, that is an interior holiness, and the exterior just comes that way. Amen. Yeah. It, it shakes up. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. The the life source that is inside of you is displayed by the fruit it bears, right? Praise God. If you're holy on the inside, you'll be holy on the outside. That's right. Praise God. But if we get you holy on the outside and you're not holy on the inside, you know, we're not doing nothing. Yeah. But we're talking about true holiness. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Amen. So the Lord wants us to, uh, to be holy on the inside. True holiness. Praise God. Amen? Now, in... Uh, I'm going to look at Proverbs 23, 7 here in just a minute, Brother Dina. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, when we're talking about the mind, most of people, or a lot of people, I say most people, a lot of people would say, oh, my mind's right here. It's up here in my head. You know? But the truth of the matter is, is that your mind is not necessarily up in your head. It affects your head. There's a difference in your brain and your mind. You can operate, uh, you can get a surgeon to get out whatever tools they use to do brain surgery, and he can take that, that brain and he can operate on it, on that physical, tangible, touchable brain. He can work on that brain without ever touching your mind. Because your mind is not something that you can t physically touch. Amen? Right. Praise God. It's kind of like, you know, oftentimes, uh, oftentimes, you know, the Bible speaks of the heart. And, you know, we know we got a physical brain, but we have a mind, right? Yeah. A physical can be touched, but the mind, uh, but the mind part is, is not a touchable thing. Amen. Praise God. And it's not just located right here in the cranium. Right? The mind is not just right here. Praise God. This is the brain. The mind affects this right here and works this right here. But it involves a whole lot more. Just like you have a physical heart. That if you had to have heart surgery, they could slice you open and they could work on your heart. But the Bible speaks about another area of the heart. Amen. I believe that what we are exterior, that we physically can feel, we also have a spiritual side of that. Amen. You have a heart inside of you, but it's spiritual and a doctor can't operate on it. Amen. Amen. No scalpel will cut it. Amen. Did, did not they say whenever Jesus appeared to them on the road of Emmaus and he started unfolding the scriptures to them, this is what they said in Luke 24, 32. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Amen. Praise God. They were definitely feeling that physical heart uh, being affected by the things that they were feeling, but there was something a whole lot deeper going on. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The, their heart that 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 they were being affected by was not that that uh, physical thing that could have been operated on. Amen. It's the inner part of a human being, of a man or of a woman. Amen. Yeah. And that mind is something deeper than just this cranium. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It's a spiritual thing that is inside of us. Amen. Look at Proverbs 23 and 7. This scripture, Brother Dean, we've got it. For as he thinketh, what do you mean thinketh? How do you think in your heart? I thought you thought in your brain. No, that deeper part, that inner man, as a man thinketh 
in his heart, so is he. Amen. When it's referencing the heart, that spiritual aspect of it, and that and that mind is talking about that inner man on the inside of each and every one of us. Amen. Yes, it affects the physical one. Yes, it affects the, the brain. Yes, it affects the, the physical heart. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. At death, those things are separated. Right. Amen. Right. Praise God. That don't mean you're two people. Amen. It just means that, that you're made up of a spirit, a soul, and, and a body. According to 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Paul told the Thessalonians, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole, listen to him, spirit mm -hmm. and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul wanted the Christians to be preserved. The whole man. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. You know, he didn't mention the mind there, did he? But you know what? That word spirit, this is Strong's definition of the word spirit here. I'm just giving you the definition of it. Amen. First of all, it says a current of air. Amen. That is breath. So when you're talking about spirit, amen, <laughs> praise God. Remember what the Lord did when he created man? He breathed in his nostrils and he became a living soul. Your soul, I'll give you my view of it. Your soul is your very life, your existence, amen? Who you are, praise God. And the thing that quickens that soul is your spirit, amen? Jesus said, uh, the, the, it is the spirit that quicken it or makes, makes you alive and move. You know, like your mind, like your brain. I mean, not just your brain, but the, that inner part. Amen. That functioning of you. It is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profiteth nothing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So he says, he uses this definition, breath, breeze. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? The wind blows where it listens, and you hear the sound there, and you can't tell where it comes from, where it goes, so is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So there's that wind, and Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. It's just a uh, metaphor, amen, to relay a concept, amen, that the Spirit is invisible, you can't see it. But also, here in, uh, in this definition, it goes on to say, in Strong's definition, mental, mental, everybody say mental. Mental has to do with your mind, doesn't it? Come on, mental disposition. Right, mental disposition, amen. Praise God. In a disposition, the way you act, mental disposition, amen. That's what is the definition, one of the definitions of spirit. It also went on to say, one of the last definitions in it is mind. Praise God, amen. Your mind. Praise God. And so it goes back to Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. On the interior, in that inner man, so is he. Amen. Praise God. It brought me to the thought about Legion over in Mark chapter 5, verse number 1. It tells about Legion. Praise God. And they came over to the other side of of the sea in the, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now he had a human spirit, but he had some disturbances in his life, right? He had some things and some powers that had overtaken uh, his life. You know, the Bible tells us uh, that the Lord is that spirit of truth, right? He, I'm not going to go through all that because of time, but he talks about the veil being taken away. Uh, you know, that now the Lord is that spirit, that veil that was upon Moses. Remember that? When the veil is taken, when it turned to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Right. And the Lord is that spirit. In other words, he's the spirit of truth, Amen. right? Yeah. The Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, the Bible also says that he that is joined, 
Christians, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen? Amen. Whenever we get the Holy Ghost, we marry up to the Spirit of God. Amen? We do. Amen? He, he and, and, and us, we become one spirit. Amen? We're together, married together. Right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So here we have uh, a man with, uh, he's married up to something beside, you know, his human spirit, amen, is married up to something besides uh, God, right? These unclean spirits try to attach themselves to the people. And that's what has happened to this man that we know as Legion, right? Praise God. But he doesn't just have uh, one inside of him. He has a bunch of demons inside of him. And it goes, let me go ahead and read what it says about him. When he was coming out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, but uh, because that he had often, he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broke into pieces. He had a lot of power stuff in him, didn't he? Neither could any man tame him. He was a lawless one, was he not? Praise God. Most of us would say he had mental problems. Yeah. Ah, come on. If you took it to the doctor of the day, they'd take him over to the psychiatry part and they'd say, this guy's got some mental problems. Yeah. They would. They labeled it anything but the problem that he really had. Right. What he had inside of him, he had spirits inside of him. He had minds. Him. Amen. He had other minds that had con had uh, gotten with his very spirit and had latched to him and had controlled him. That's where he found himself. He was in a miserable shape. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible went on to say that and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. He was I don't know that for sure because I don't have all the story. But I will imagine it kind of happens like it happens to most people. They start dibble dabbling around with things they shouldn't be messing with. Amen? Amen. And the next thing you know, what was once a toy is now a ruler over them. Yeah. Amen. What was something that was cool is now bombarding their lives and has overtaken them. And uh, they're going to have to have an act of God to get that stuff out of them. Amen? Amen. Because as a man... And a man in his own self does not have the ability to free himself from the powers of darkness. Amen. Because the devil is a fallen angel. And man was made a little lower than the angels. Amen. But oh, I thank God for grace. I thank God for Jesus. Amen. I thank God that when there was no way, there is a way. Amen. There's a way. I believe that Jesus saw the condition this man was in and everybody else was hightailing it and running away from him and lived in fear every night lest he was to come and snatch one of their kids, take him to the tomb, possibly even eat him, who knows what all he would have done. He was in bad shape. He had legions inside of him. He had big problems like nobody you ever known. Amen. Praise God. But it says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Out of all the stuff that was in his life, that stuff could not keep him if he was desirous to have Jesus, to meet Jesus, to call on Jesus, to get some help. He, listen to me, the devil couldn't hold him back and the devil can't hold you back or anybody else back that desires to be close to the Lord. Nothing can stop you. Amen. Praise God. If it's not Jesus involved, you're helpless. But whenever you get Jesus involved, amen, praise God, you're, it's possible that you can be the land. But his mental condition was very uh, devastating. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because if you look at what happened to him, in Mark chapter 5, verse 15, just a few verses down, it says, now, Jesus had... Those demons spoke out of that man. And I'm just kind of going through what it was, uh, what it says without reading it all. But that the devils cried out to Jesus, uh, Lord, let us go out into the hogs. 
Amen. Let us go out in the hogs. Uh, don't send us out into the deep. Let us go out into the hogs. Amen. Don't, don't cast us out into utter darkness, in other words. You know, we'll, we'll be shut up till the end of time, right? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. They didn't want to go out. They knew who he was. They knew who he was. He was the creator of the universe. Amen. He created everything, including them. And they said, Lord, don't cast us out into the deep. Amen. So Jesus allowed them to go into the hogs. And here's another very important uh, thing to take notice to. Can I tell you, I don't want to scare nobody off, but if you're not really sincerely seeking the Lord and you're here and somebody's got a devil, amen. Yeah. Come on, they'll be looking for a dog or a hog to go into. Amen. amen. Come on. Praise God. If, if, when devils go out, the Bible says they seek rest and find enough. They say, I'll return to the house from which I come out. Amen. Find it swept and garnished. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's very important when you come to church to get your mind and heart on the Lord. Amen. It's very important to listen to me. Amen. Because something may come out of somebody and you don't want it to go inside Amen. of you. You need to be real with God. You need to really Amen. quit playing church. Get on fire for God. Reach out to God. You ain't got nothing to worry about. But those spirits are going to look for a place to land. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 I, I'm concerned for our neighbors because I believe a lot of things are coming out of people in this place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If the neighbors start acting up, you might want to take into consideration what might have happened. Amen. Yeah. Some of this stuff. Pray over our neighborhood. Pray over our neighborhood. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But this guy, the Bible says that after Jesus cast those devils out of him, that whole herd of hog ran violently. That whole was in him. Yeah. Violence. That very, the actions that came forth of, the, of, of those hogs is what was actually resident inside that man before Jesus got in his life. Amen? They ran violently down a sleep, steep place and were drowned in the sea. Amen? Yeah. He probably had a suicidal spirit inside of him too. Because right. that's exactly where those hogs did. They wouldn't kill themselves. Amen? Yeah. Ran down. I mean, this guy was in big trouble. And the city heard what was happening? All our hogs are dead. <laughs> Praise God. And this man, Jesus, had stepped on the shore. Nobody could take tame that man. Nobody could handle him. Amen. But here, this one man steps on the shore, and this guy's running to Jesus. The devils can't even hold him back. Amen. And the Bible says that Jesus gets those devils out of him. And then in verse 15, it says, And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devils and had the legion. Where do they see him now? Setting and clothed and in his right Come on, gird up the loins of your mind, amen? amen? That problem was coming by the way that he was thinking, amen? He let other thoughts and things get in his life, amen? Praise God, but when those demons went, his mind came clear, amen? amen. Praise God, and he was sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, amen, and in his right mind, and they were plump afraid. In fact, they asked Jesus to leave. <laughs> They ask him to leave because if there's something greater than what that guy has, we don't really don't know what to do with it. Right. Praise God. Yeah. But his mind was made whole. Amen. His mind was made clear. <laughs> Amen. He was sound minded. He was berserk before. Amen. But Jesus healed his mind when he got those things out of his life. Amen. Praise God. Only the only true peace of mind can only be found. Listen to me. If you have trouble with these things, they can only be found. Amen. Surrendered and setting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's the feet of Jesus where we find uh, our help. Amen. And our deliverance. We got a world right now that is currently being attacked by enemies. Listen to me. You know how the enemies fight? Y'all realize we're in a war? Yeah. Y'all realize that? Yeah. I mean, it's not bullets. It's not tanks. There's war over Ukraine stuff with all that kind of stuff, Russia and Ukraine. But we are under siege right now. We are Our, our land is in a war right now. Yes. 
it's in a it's in a it's in a war. We're in the heat of it. In fact, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll not even say this because I haven't verified it or nothing. Do y'all know who Gordon Chang is? He's one of the people in the White House. I think I can't remember exactly what his position is. Chinese person. And he gets with the I think he gets with the military powers and stuff and it's kind of like a uh, analyst over him and he had I think it was him that had made the, the quote that yesterday uh, like I said it hadn't been confirmed so that's the reason why I'm hesitant he's saying it but uh, oh, Xi Jinping we have in our face the, the end time one world government Amen. Trying to take over. I'm not saying that they are. I, I pray the Lord, uh, and I've been encouraging all of y'all to pray, you know, uh, that the Lord will keep our nation from being involved in it. But there are going to be some nations that resist uh, that the Antichrist system, okay? And uh, I want to hope and believe that uh, the U.S. is that are those eagle wings that are only you know, that are helping Israel in the end time. That's what I'm hoping because we are our national symbol is the eagle, right? Yeah. And the Bible speaks about to that woman, which was Israel, was given a pair of great eagle wings to you know to take her into the wilderness. And that's during that last 42 months, that last three and a half years before, right before Jesus comes, you know. And I'm hoping, I'm praying. Listen, we need to be fighting this battle. Yeah. Come on, we need to be involved. We need to really, really realize where we're living at. We are living in the end time, folks. It's just staring us right in the face. Things are happening, and we need to be prayer warriors. Amen? We need, we need to you know, take up the mantle and, and, and fight spiritual warfare because there is spiritual warfare going on. There are things, psychological warfare, and, and it's coming by way of propaganda. Amen. I'm telling you, day and night, the media, the the uh, they call it the mainstream media, is pumping that stuff out because they are uh, a part of that system that's trying to come into play. Amen. That Amen. one world in time government. Amen. It is an attack on what we know as America. Amen? Praise God. The enemy is going to try to come in and going to try to discourage you. Try to inject fear inside of your life, trying to get you confused, and we know God's not the author of confusion, but the safest place to be is to stay at the feet of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We can keep our minds uh, healed and whole if we'll just stay at the feet of Jesus. Amen? And the devil's not big enough to keep you away from that if you have a desire. It couldn't keep legion away, and it can't if you have a desire to live for him. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. That's where Le uh, the guy that they called Legion before, uh, he got the, the devil's cast out of him. Amen. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. When he was at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, he had perfect peace. Amen? Yes. That's where we find our help at, at the feet of Jesus. Amen? Yes. Praise yes. God. Jesus is the only one that can give you that peace. Amen? Yes. Praise God. And there's not no devil. Nobody's able to pluck you out of his hands. Amen? You can get out, but I'm telling you, don't get out this morning. Amen? Praise God. Go to the feet of Jesus. If you're troubled, amen, and your battlefield is troubled, come on, if it's disrupted, if you're going through things and you're puzzled and you're you're uh, confused and things are like that going on turbulently in you, listen to me. There's one place to go to make it healed, amen, to make it perfect, to make it peaceful, and that's the feet of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me this morning? It's at the feet of Jesus. Go to the foot of the cross. Amen. And I'm not talking about the literal word or a wooden bench. I'm talking about what Jesus did for you. He will bring that peace. He will bring that clearness of thought. 
He will bring that deliverance from the bombardments of hell. Amen. Amen. I've seen it ever since I've been in church. Amen. I've been in church since 1979. And I've seen, I remember having a revival one time when we were over Midway. I think it was back when Brother Barbara was there. But we was having a revival. And uh, I can't remember how long, a couple weeks, something like that. You know, services. We was, and we started to go into that. And one thing after another started happening. Things started uh, you know, happening. Sickness started happening. It was just like a wave of sickness. And then it was a wave of confusion. And then it was a wave of this and a wave of that. Amen. All to disrupt things. I'm here to tell you, listen to me. It was the enemy fighting. Amen. It was the enemy fighting. And he wars against us. Amen. And he'll try to get you together. Cinch that saddle up a little bit tighter so that you won't fall off. Amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Amen. Because he trusted in thee. Amen. God doesn't give us confusion. God gives us soundness of mind, soberness of mind. And if you don't have that today, there's one place to go. And that's to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I promise you, you approach him right, you will find the help that you need. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You sometimes we gotta stay there a little while because we got too much of us in the way. Yeah. Or we got too much stuff we don't want to let go of. Right. You know? This is what Sister Emily spoke about this morning. Mm -hmm. We got too much stuff in the way. We got too many other cares in the way. But you know what? When you're like Legion, when you got all the troubles he got, listen to me. It's not hard to come to Jesus necessarily because you know what the stuff you got, the trouble you got is destroying you and you need some help. Amen. I need to get all of this out and I need to get at the feet of Jesus and I need to find peace of mind with him. Amen. He'll give it to you. He will come through for you. Yes. Praise God. Paul tells Timothy, amen, 2 Timothy 2, 6 and 7, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, listen to me, thou stir up the gift of God. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Praise God. Because you're having trouble does not mean you're devil possessed. Right. The, because you're having trouble does not mean that the devil's gotten inside of your life. You can have the Holy Ghost and have a, a lack of really persevering with the Lord or getting at the feet of Jesus or just getting yourself busy with too many things else beside the Lord. You can... Uh, you can let the devil come in. There is not only possession, but there is obsession or oppression. Amen. The devil can come and start buffeting you. And I found that over the years. A lot of times you don't even realize that it's happening. He brings a sneak attack upon you. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're feeling gloomy and, and all kinds of things. And you feel depressed and down and out. But I'm here to tell you, if you can wake up, gird up the loins of your mind and go to the foot of Jesus. Amen. He'll clear your mind. Amen. He'll give you the peace that you need in your life. Amen. You can go to AA or drug rehabs or, you know, counselors and, you know, self-help things and all that kind of stuff. And you're just going to keep finding yourself struggling with it. I thank God for any help that is offered that actually tries to help somebody, you know. But listen to me. Nobody can do what Jesus can do. Right. Jesus can make a madman whole. Yeah. He just did it. We read about it in the Bible. Amen. So he says, listen to me. The Spirit of God is in your life. If you've got the Holy Ghost, He's there. Yeah. He's there, right? Mm -hmm. He's there no matter how perplexed you may feel. Yeah. He's there. Amen. Praise God. He's just not being allowed to, to bring other things or block it and stuff like that. Yeah. Amen. But you got to come to yourself like the prodigal son, you know? You got to come to yourself and you got to say, I know where my help is. In the case of the prodigal son, he was a backslider, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. But I'm not just talking about a backslider. I'm just talking about somebody that's having trouble inside of their thinking, inside of, they got a troubled spirit. Amen. I'm telling you, the place to go is to go, honestly, like we talked about last night, honestly, settled and you know what happened when water if it sets too long? Huh? 
things in it, right? Yeah. Not that the Holy Ghost ever gets anything in it, but we let things get in it. Yeah. In our walk with the Lord, amen? And he went to stir up the gift that is in thee with the put on the, my hands, Paul said. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Do you have power? And of love. I like that, don't you? And of a him enough, or we don't stay at his feet enough, right? Yeah. We don't, because other things start coming in. The devil looks and sees you're not praying and doing all th kinds of things. They probably get in the hole and say, ah, let's get him do it quiet, though. Don't let him know we're attacking. Yeah. Don't let him know we're moving up on him. That's, that, this, this is a good time to start in putting some sin before him or her. You know, this is a good time. Because you know what? Uh, they've not been praying. Yeah. And you know, one week without prayer makes one week. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, one, uh, what is it? Seven days without prayer makes one week. Yeah. W e a k, amen. And you think the devil doesn't know all of that? He knows all of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, he looks for the opportunity. Whenever you're praying and you're on fire for God, listen to me. I believe God's got a hedge about you, just like He did Job. Yeah. But when we stop praying, amen, and we stop persevering with the Lord, we stop stirring up the gift that's in us. You know what we're doing? We're letting cracks and openings inside of that. Inside of that protection thing, you know, and the, these are my last ones. Praise God, Amen. Yeah. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. That's what took Jesus to that man's place where he was. The love of God, yeah. right? God is love, and he that, listen to me, he that dwelleth. Yeah. That don't mean visits. You understand? That doesn't mean visit. He that dwelleth. That means your tabernacle there. Yeah. This is a spiritual place. Yeah. We're talking about, listen to me, not just in your brain, but in your spirit, on the inside of you. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Amen. Right? Yeah. Go back to John 15. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Right. You can't be separated from him and continue to bear fruit. But when you stay tapped into the vine, right? Yeah. Then you bring forth fruit abundantly. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Staying at the feet of Jesus. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Here it is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear, no fear. That family, whenever Jairus' daughter had died, listen to me. He said, fear not. Yeah. Amen. Do you know why they didn't need to fear? Because Jesus was there. Jesus was there. Fear not. Only believe. Amen? Amen. Only believe. Yep. If you don't believe what I'm telling you this morning, you're probably just going to go on your way, live with a puzzled and confused and a depressed life. Amen? But if you can hear what I'm saying, yeah. it casts it out. Amen. Praise God. Because fear hath torment, Legion. He had torment, didn't he? Yep. Until he got to the feet of the love of God. Right? That was Jesus. He is not made perfect in love. Don't tell him what things went through the Legion's mind. You know? Whenever he realized, because not only was he demon for this, but he was a man too. Yeah. He had a human mind. Right? He had a human mind. And he was, how many times do you think that he wondered, am I without hope? Everything they tried to catch me with, I've already tore it up. And they couldn't cast it out. Right. And you know what? He was, he thought he, his hope was in the disciples. And sometimes, listen to me, you may find this a difficulty even with the disciples finding the help you need. But there's one. If you go to the one, Jesus, amen, amen. if you stay and abide in him, you will 
find what you need. Amen. They brought that son to Jesus and he cast that spirit out of him. Amen. And he was old. He looked like a dead man for a little bit. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus took him by the hand and he lifted him up and he was whole. And that's what he wants to do to everybody that will come to him and stay in him. Him and live in Him and abide in Him, abide in His love. They will be made whole. They will be made complete. Amen. And they will be sound. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Right. Praise God. Mm. <sighs> Praise God. I don't know. Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. 